Would you now turn into your Bibles, James chapter 5? We're still talking about changing hopeless situations. Sometimes there are hopeless situations. But through the power of God in His living word, we can change them. Aren't you glad about that? Anything is possible. Amen. I can be anything I choose to be. I can go anywhere I choose to go. I can do anything I choose to do. That's the word of God. And I believe it. Amen. I'm reading from the 16th verse. We've been reading this for a while now. You ought to know it all by heart now. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that she may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Now, don't you forget it. We have studied about the righteous man. We found out from the word of God that we have been made righteous. That according to the word of God, we are righteous. A man that's born again is righteous. We found out from God's point of view what righteousness really is. And we discovered from the Bible that righteousness is not the same thing as right living. But that right living is the product of righteousness. And now that's very, very big. It's very important that you understand that in your life. We found out that no man could live right until he is first of all a righteous man. That only a righteous man can live right. And that God can only require a man to live right only after he has been made righteous. God cannot expect a man to live right who has not been made righteous. You have to be righteous to be able to live right. And that's the only time the judgment of God can be just. Can you say amen? All right. So he made us righteous in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 verse 1, Therefore being declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We also found out that he gave us righteousness as a gift. Not by our qualifying for it because no unrighteous man could qualify for righteousness until God gave it to him as a free gift. It says the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that eternal life is the nature of God. And that eternal life is the divine nature. And that divine nature is righteousness. It says, they which receive abundance of grace, Romans chapter 5 verse 17, and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Which means, if you have been made the righteousness of God, if you have become the righteousness of God, then you will never... Never leave the down life. Can you say amen? amen? It means that you have become a success. It means that you already have everything under control. Can you say amen? amen. No wonder he says, ye are of God, little children. First John chapter 4 verse 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now when he says ye are of God, that doesn't mean you are on the side of God. That doesn't mean that you belong to God. When he says ye are of God, it means you hail from God. It means your origin is from God. Can you say amen? amen. No wonder he says whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcome at the world, even our faith. So in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 says, Therefore, we walk by faith and not by sensory perception. Say, Amen. Amen. Glory to his name forever. Now he says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man works. He says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man works a lot. It makes tremendous power available. It produces results. The effect of fervent prayer. And when we read it in the Amplified Translation, it says, The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. The fervent, effectual, fervent prayer is the same thing that he renders in that version as earnest. Earnest. And then he gave us Elijah as a man who stood in righteousness, who had the right standing. You know, righteousness gives you right standing. 
And the man Elijah had right standing in the presence of God. 17th verse, are you ready? Chapter 5, book of James. He says, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. In other words, he had the same pressures that we have. He had the same temptations that we have. He had the same kind of conditions, life's conditions that we have today. So he says, Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not on earth, but the space of three years and six months. Three and a half years. It didn't rain, because this man, Elijah, the Bible says, prayed earnestly. Now, this is another kind of prayer. And we have studied before that there are different kinds of prayer. Now, in his prayer is heartfelt, it is continued, it has deep convictions, it is fervent. And another, another synonym we found when we were studying it is serious. I like that. Praise God. Hallelujah. It is serious. There's not many people who pray serious prayers. What do you mean serious prayers? Serious prayers don't mean when you squeeze your face and clench your fist and scream at God. You know? No, it's not that way. But it's talking about when a prayer is heartfelt. When a prayer is coming from your innermost being. Are you still hearing me? So it says, He prayed earnestly that it might not rain on the earth on the earth by the space of three years and six months and he prayed again and the heaven gave rain he prayed to God that it should not rain aren't you wondering why should a man pray to God that it should not rain and then for three and a half years the man held the heavens that there should be no rain and then later prayed again that there should be rain why didn't he want rain and why did he want rain? Why did God listen to him? Because the man identified himself with God's plans and purposes. You see, there was a time in Israel, this man was a prophet in Israel. There was a time in Israel that the people were not living according to the word of God. They were not living according to the covenant. And Elijah identified himself with God and prayed to God not to give them rain. He said, the, the prosperity of the wicked destroys him. You know, that's the word of God. In the book of Proverbs, it says, the prosperity of fools destroys them. So he prayed to God that there should be no rain. Because as long as they are prospering in their way, they would think that they are doing God's service in their evil ways. So he said, oh God, let there be no rain. And there was no rain for three and a half years. And there was so much famine. And a man, Ahab, was the king in those days. Who was the husband of a woman named Jezebel. And the Bible tells us that there was no king in Israel that sold himself to work iniquity, that worked evil like the king Ahab. Nobody. That sold himself to work evil like Ahab. And the Bible tells us, whom his wife Jezebel stared up. His wife stared him up to do evil. And he did so much evil in the sight of the Lord. Elijah prayed to God that there should be no rain. And then for three and a half years, there was no rain. But here the Bible tells us that the, the way Elijah prayed was earnest. He didn't just come out and say, No, heavens, no more rain, and walk away. You know, we, we get that idea when we read the Old Testament where the story is called from. We get that idea that he just walked out one day and said, Oh, king, there's going to be no rain. But according to my word, come on, let's look at it. Would you turn now to 1 Kings? No, no, no. 2 Kings. Did I say 2 Kings? 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17. Oh, 
hallelujah. It brings to my mind the words of the Lord Jesus. It's in Matthew's Gospel 6, chapter verse 6, where he says, When you pray, um, get into your closet, shut your door, and pray to the Father who is in secret, and the Father who seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. The Father sees in secret. All right? He says to pray to the Father in secret, and the Father sees in secret, and he'll reward you openly. So when this man first prayed, nobody knew enough to write it down. But to see, by the power of the Holy Ghost, who was there that day, James knew the way the man Elijah prayed. Because it's not recorded for us here how he prayed. Are you ready? James, uh, no, no, 1 Kings 17, chapter, beginning with verse 1. And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, remember Ahab was the king, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Hallelujah. <laughs> and you know, if you read the rest of the story, God had to tell Elijah, hey, find some place where I'm going to feed you because you get into trouble too. And God sent him somewhere where he would nourish him during the famine. Now, what we get here is Elijah coming to the king Ahab and saying to him, there will be no dew nor rain these years. Now, James tells us this three and a half years. But according to my word, he didn't say, Thus saith the Lord. Did you notice? Look at it. Verse 1. As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. He's come to prophesy bad economy. To the king, something terrible is coming. There will be no dew and no rain. Three and a half years, but according to my word, he is not praying. This is, this is, this is a proclamation of his faith. But we find here in the book of James that before the man came out to the king, he had prayed earnestly. There are times when we stand in the presence of people and proclaim the word of God. For example, you hear me say, be healed in the name of Jesus. Before talking like that, you ought to have prayed earnestly. Are you still out there? Sure. Before God will hear you publicly, he must hear you privately. Somebody said, no one can move the hearts of men who has not moved the heart of God. How true. See? So the man came and, and prophesied and, and spoke the word. But God brought it to pass because the man had prayed Honestly, it gives us, you know, when you study about Elijah from the Old Testament, you really don't get a picture of the man's heart. You don't know what kind of a man he was. I hear people saying, send another Elijah here to bring thy fire down. They think that Elijah was just out there in the street bringing down fire. But before the man got fire in the street, he got fire in his closet. Hallelujah. So, we read in the 18th verse, book of James, chapter 5, where he said, And they prayed again, and the heaven gave rain. All right, let's find out where, where, where that's recorded for us. 18th chapter. I want to read first from, and this is what enlightens me. This is what blesses me here. I want us to see it. Beginning with verse 1, chapter 18, 1 Kings. Are you there? Okay. If you don't have a Bible, hmm, hmm, hmm. Now I'm very sorry for you. This is one time in your life you needed one Bible. You need a copy now. Look around. Don't just look at me. Look around. Look into somebody's Bible. And then if someone's looking at your Bible, tell him, don't do it next week. 
All right, go ahead now. Look into somebody's Bible. Don't act like you really don't need it. Don't act like you already know these things. Do you know there's a blessing for somebody who sees the word? I know some of you don't know that, but I can read that to you. Maybe I should give that to you pretty quick. All right, Proverbs. Have you found it? Chapter 4, beginning with verse 20. He says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. Did you notice that? For they are alive unto those that find them, and hair to all their flesh. Now the word hair there, oh beautiful. And imagine, it says medicine to their flesh. The word of God is medicine. Praise the Lord. All right, back to 1 Kings chapter 18. Are you there? And I'm reading from verse 1. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year. Now James tells us it was three and a half years, all right? Now in the third year saying, go show thyself unto Ahab and I will send rain upon the earth. Now, did you notice something? God said, I will send rain. Now God doesn't have no right to send rain until the man who said, don't give it in the first place is requesting for it again. Otherwise, when, when, when the heavens were shut the first time, it would mean it was not a result of Elijah's prayer. It would mean that God just decided, now, Elijah, I'm shut in the heavens, there'll be no rain. Then three and a half years later, he says, now I want to send rain. That'll be okay. But if God says, three and a half years later, I want to send rain, it must mean Elijah is saying, I want you to send rain. And that's exactly what James tells us, that he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain. Hallelujah. So he prayed the first time that there should be no rain. And God responded by shutting out the heavens that there should be no rain. Then he prayed again that there should be rain. So what we find here, what we find here in verse 1, chapter 18, 1 Kings, was God's response to a prayer that Elijah had prayed and we didn't know it because it wasn't written there until James talked about it and said the man prayed again. How? Earnestly. Are you there? So read it again. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, Go show thyself unto Ahab and I will send rain upon the earth. Meaning that the man had already prayed. At this time, Elijah had already prayed to God to send rain. So God is saying, you can now go show yourself to the king. I will send rain upon the earth. And Elijah went to show himself unto Ahab. And there was a severe famine in Samaria. Samaria was a capital. Praise God. This is beautiful. So, Elijah goes to the king. God had already spoken to Elijah that he would send rain. Elijah now walks to the king and we find ourselves in verse 41. Would you turn to verse 41, same chapter, same book. Are you there? Why did Elijah pray to God to send rain? I'll tell you. Because he already knew what to do. After there was such severe famine, he knew what to do. He called the people to Mount Camel. He challenged the prophets of Baal. And then he called fire out of heaven to burn up the sacrifice, leak up the water. And then the people cried out, Jehovah is the God. Hallelujah. So now they were ready to turn again to the Lord. See? Okay. 
Now, watch this. God said, go show yourself to Ahab. I'm ready to send the rain. Okay? Verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. How many of you ever heard that prophecy? Did you ever hear somebody prophesy? I hear a sound of abundance of rain. There is a sound of abundance of rain. Did you ever hear it? Sure. Elijah heard it. Look at it. God said in verse 1, chapter 18, book of Kings, 1 Kings, we already read it. God said to him, yeah, I'm ready to send rain on the earth. Go show yourself to the king. (laughs) So he walked to the king. And he said, now king, you can go home, eat and drink. I hear a sound of abundance of rain. Rain is coming. But Elijah was a trained man. He was a trained man of God. Here is where sometimes we miss it. And this is the lesson. We're not just talking about our story here. This is the lesson. We've got to get something here. Look at it. The Bible says that Elijah was a man of like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly. You see, what James was letting us know was not a man who prayed, but a man who prayed earnestly and got results. He's not just telling us that somebody prayed and got results. He's letting us know how the man prayed. And so that we can go back and study that man's life and find out what we can gain from what the man did. So that we can do it because God's no respect of persons. What he does for one, he'll do for another under the same circumstances. Hallelujah. Oh, this is, this, this is beautiful. So beautiful. You know, from here, I, I learned a lot of things. When I first studied this, it, it, it was very enlightening to me. It, it taught me many things. I, I want you to begin to see this. This is beautiful. God already responded to the man's prayer. The man's been praying. And God says, now, yep, I've answered your prayer. You can go show yourself to the king. I'm going to send rain. He's praying for God to send the rain. God says, I'll send the rain. So he walks off to prophesy. Have you ever been there praying and God spoke to you and told you, yeah, whatever you've been asking for, I've done it. And then you went out and proclaimed it. You went out to proclaim the victory. Did you ever get yourself in that position, that condition in your life where you prophesied it, you heard God talk, you prophesied it, and then you waited for it and it never showed up. And you wondered, what in the world is this? And you got frustrated. And those to whom you prophesied thought you were lying. I met people who said, I don't like the gift of prophecy. And I said, why? They said, a lot of people are misusing it. What do you mean, Mrs.? They said, well, they prophesied and didn't come to pass. And I don't ever want to prophesy. And then it doesn't come to pass. So I, I've told God I don't want the gift of prophecy. I said, no, you're making a big mistake. That's one gift of God you ought to have in your life. Hallelujah. Oh, but this man was trained already. And that's what you're going through. You're getting trained, praise God. Hey, watch what he does. He he gets God's response. He gets God's word. And God says, yeah, I'm going to send rain. Go show yourself. In other words, you can take it public. Now you can tell anybody. If you can tell the king, you sure can tell anybody. He says, God sending rain. Like you stood up and prophesied. (laughs) Oh, glory. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Mm -hmm. Somebody wrote me a letter one time, a long time ago. And he said, um, I prophesied in my company that we're not going down. Because the the managing director said, uh, we're getting problems, having so many problems, we may sell out. And then I I prophesied in the name of Jesus, we are not selling out, we are not going down. He says, but we went down. Where did I go wrong? Do you know the Bible says that God confirms the word of his servants? He performs the counsel of his messengers. 
He does. When you speak in his name, he brings it to pass. Now, what, what when it fails? Mm-hmm. Elijah didn't want to take chances. He knew it was possible to prophesy. And then it doesn't come to pass. Watch it. Remember, the Bible tells us Elijah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that there should be no rain. He prayed earnestly. Earnestly means that he prayed seriously. Two, with deep convictions. Three, that it was a heartfelt prayer. Four, that it was continued. See, the man's praying. And, you're talking about supplications. Coming from within. There's a prayer that is prayed in the head. There's another one that's prayed from the heart. There are two different things. The Bible says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a contrite heart. And that a broken spirit God will not reject. Not many people know how to pray that way. He's not just talking about, you know, I have a message I preached some years ago. I titled it, Try Tears. If you don't have it, try to get it. Try Tears. When you say, I tried everything, try tears. And I'm not talking about crocodile tears. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not talking about somebody making some tears and trying to get them to come out. I'm talking about, oh, that prayer from within. From your innermost being. We'll come to that. Are you ready? So, Elijah, God says, go and show yourself to the king. I'm sending rain. I, I, I've answered your prayer. You're going to get rain. So, verse 41, and Elijah said unto Ahab, that's the king, get thee up, eat and drink. Eat and drink. Enjoy yourself. Come on. For there is a sound of abundance of rain. Hallelujah. So what? Ahab went up to eat, ate to drink. And Elijah went up to celebrate, eating and drinking and running around with his colleagues, waiting for the rains to come down. Is that not what the Bible says? Oh, maybe I didn't read it right. Let me go again. Verse 42. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went around with the other prophets, and they went singing and dancing and shouting, rain's coming. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So Ahab went up to eat and drink, and Elijah went up to sleep. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. Come on, tell me, what do you think he's doing? Praying. What's he praying about again? God already said he's doing it, so why are you praying? Yeah, I said the man's being trained. He's already known that there could be a prophecy. You may hear the word of God, I'm sending rain. You may actually hear from your spirit the sound of abundance of rain. You may go ahead and prophesy it, but see, you've got to see it come to pass. You have to pray in such a way that that thing comes down. Otherwise, you prophesy it all right, you hear the sound all right, and still there'll be no rain. Elijah knew this. The Bible says he prayed earnestly. The Amplified Version says the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man availeth much. It makes, dyna, it makes dyna, a tremendous power available. Tremendous. I mean, that's big. It makes dynamic power it's like a dynamite it makes tremendous power available you know what's tremendous power think about that thing coming with great moment momentum nobody can stop it it's coming so big have you ever seen something coming out against you and you thought hey i i, I can't stop it and you were thinking of where to go to and sometimes people get confused when that thing is coming with so much force, you don't know whether to run to the left or to the right. And yet, 
there's a big space over here, another one over here. You could run anywhere. But the thing is coming with tremendous power. The man so confused doesn't know where to go. That's what happens to the devil when we make tremendous power available. Doesn't know where to go. We just crush his power. The Bible says dynamic in its working. Oh. Oh. I've seen people pray and move their hands and try to, they say, give the devil a punch. And they go, oops. And then give him a kick. Oh, goose. And you know, that, that doesn't work. The Bible says Elijah prayed earnestly. He wasn't shadow boxing. No. Say, devil, you're trying me, huh? You're trying me, huh? You're trying me. <laughs> that's not going to work. Hallelujah. And that, that's not going to work. Bible says Elijah prayed earnestly. Look at the way. Oh boy, this is nice. He tells us that the man went to the top of Camel. That's a mountain. And, and then he knelt down and put his face between his knees. How many times have you prayed that way? I know many of you. How, how do you pray? You're getting set for work in the morning and you're going like this. You're taking your shirt and praying down in the name of Jesus as I go to work today. Uh, uh, in Jesus' name, I thank you for everything. And where's my key? And you get your key. Uh, you are going with me to work. And no, no, no. That's not in his prayer. You're not serious. You can't change things that way, brother. Jesus said, when you pray, go into your closet. He says, and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who sees in secret, and he will reward you openly. In other words, when that dynamic power begins to work, the walls can't keep it back. I mean, you've, you've made the verses, it makes tremendous power available. You're inside that room. The power is so strong, it knocks down the walls. Before long, that thing that happened in your room begins to work in your city. Before long, it starts working in your state. Before long, it starts working in the country. Before long, it's going all over the world. Because it's tremendous power that's been made available. Dynamic in his working. Destroying every foe. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Mm. Let's go again. Verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. You see, he's going to eat and to drink, but the man of God don't do the same. He goes back to prayer. Why? Because he knows you want to get it, you got to do it. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, Go up now. Look toward the sea. Go look. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. Huh? But I, I heard the sound of abundance of rain. But th there's nothing. And he said, go again seven times. Seven times. Seven times. So while he was praying, his servant was going out to check. Seven times, I mean, one, two, three, four. No. No, no, no. Hours were running, brother. And this man who pray and pray and pray and pray, as within his spirit he felt something ought to be happening by now. He said, go check again. And the guy would go. And then, nothing, sir. And then he's praying again, he's praying. Isn't that wonderful? The man knew something had to happen while he was praying. That meant he was praying in faith. He said, go seven times. Now the Bible tells us, verse 44, And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up. Huh. See. Go up. Say unto Ahab, Prepare thy chariot and get thee down that the rain stop thee not. Because this rain is going to be heavy. It's abundance of rain. Hmm. Every prayer is not necessarily done this way. 
continued now. There is what we call the prayer of faith. Where if you have to say it again and again, you will be going into unbelief. But that's a different kind of prayer. When do we need to pray this kind of prayer? I'll tell you. You need to pray this kind of prayer when you don't have absolute control of the situation. In other words, when whatever it is you're praying about is not within your personal jurisdiction. You must pray this way. When it's not within your personal jurisdiction. If it is not your money, it is not your body, it is not your son or your daughter, your wife. You, you understand? Even when it concerns somebody else who is of age, it begins to take another form. Prayer starts changing its rules now. For example, the man wanted to stop the rain. There's some other people who want the rain. You don't have personal authority over the rains. Because it's not for you only. So you have to pray this way like Elijah did. You're praying about the economy. It's not only you. You know, that's why sometimes people find themselves, uh, uh, it works today and doesn't work the other day. And so they say, well, well, I thought I applied the same rules. No, no. If it's got to do, with anybody else. If it's something that you don't have personal jurisdiction over, you must pray this way. Must. Second thing to learn about it is this. You pray until you don't sometimes ask, so when do I stop praying? When do I know that I should stop? Can you imagine? Elijah heard the word and still didn't stop. The message came and still didn't stop. I've had times when the Spirit of God spoke to me and still I knew I had to go on praying. Even though I already had his word that I'd done it. There are some things we can learn by the Spirit of God. They just, they just come within our spirits. If you learn to listen to your spirit, of course. See why so many things happen in our lives and we start wondering why. We think everything is in the hands of God. We say, well, if God says it will be, it will be. No, sir, you are wrong. Don't ever say whatever will be, will be. Because it's always the thing you don't want that will be. He gave you authority to stop the devil from messing up your life. You have a right to choose. You have a right to decide what will be. You have a right to live a happy and prosperous and successful life. That's God's will for his children. Hallelujah. So when are you going to stop? When are you going to stop? You just keep praying about that thing. Hey, don't get, don't get into unbelief. You, you, you stop when your spirit gains the dominion. Oh. When your spirit gains a dominion, you know it. See, when God speaks to you, it's not enough. What do I mean it's not enough? You see, the word of God, until it gets a hold of your spirit, it, it cannot produce results on the earth. It has to get a hold of your spirit. And by the time it gets a hold of your spirit, you know it like it's your present, our possession. You know it. You know it. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is beautiful. 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 